when is an aphid not an aphid? When it's a mummy. Welcome to One Minute Bugs. I'm Dennis Crawford. The cabbage aphids arrived as winged adults and immediately began giving birth to live young on the flowering heads of my kale plants. Aphids are sap suckers and may cause considerable damage to plants if their numbers get out of control. They can cause damage directly, such as uh, like shoots wilting, and sooty mould can build up on the honeydew which they excrete. They can also cause indirect damage when they transmit plant viruses. The winged cabbage aphids which arrived were all female. Males are either rare or non-existent in Australia. The females don't need the males anyway because the females can breed parthenogenetically and they tend to give birth to live young rather than lay eggs. Being all female and being able to give birth to live young is why aphid populations can build up so rapidly, especially during warm weather such as spring and autumn. But some of the aphids you are seeing here are not aphids. When is an aphid not an aphid, you may ask? When it's a mummy. No, not that kind of mummy. Let me explain. The aphids were not alone. Some tiny wasps, about two millimetres long, had found them. The wasp is the cabbage aphid parasite. This is how she works. The female wasp lays her egg inside an aphid. A wasp larva hatches from that egg and begins feeding inside the aphid. In the early stages, the wasp larva doesn't feed on vital organs of the aphid. So the aphid itself can continue to feed and grow as normal. That is until the wasp larva wants to pupate. Then all hell breaks loose. The wasp larva begins to feed on the aphid's vital organs, killing the aphid and leaving it as a mummified shell, hence the mummy. Aphid mummies can vary in colour depending on what uh, the wasp is, what species the wasp is. They can be bronze coloured, such as like here with the cabbage aphid parasite, they can be silvery or they can be black. You can use the presence of aphid mummies as a diagnostic tool. Seeing aphid mummies amongst aphids will give you an indication that the little wasps are there and doing their thing. The mummy protects the wasp pupa until a wasp, an adult wasp, wants to emerge. The wasp chews a neat little hole in the rear end of the aphid mummy and flies off to find a feed of nectar and a mate. In my garden, the wasps are winning. Look at all these mummies. This is not unusual because each wasp is capable of parasitising hundreds of aphids. You can do this in your garden. But you need to have a couple of things in place. A diverse chemical free garden and a nectar source. Just next to the brassica bed in my garden is a long leafed wax flower, a great nectar source for the little wasps. Other native plants like thryptamine bushes are excellent. They have lots of little flowers, they are perfect for tiny wasps. If you prefer to grow exotic plants, try something like alyssum. That's another plant covered in tiny little flowers great for wasps. Or you could try growing buckwheat and things like coriander for their flowers. These are all excellent nectar sources for little wasps. Remember, they're tiny, only a couple of millimetres long. Parasitic wasps are not the only beneficial insect which attack aphids. There are the predators, such as the larvae of hoverflies, ladybird beetles and their larvae, lacewing larvae and damsel bugs and other insects. These will all help to combat aphids. A diverse and chemical free garden will allow all of these beneficial insects to establish. What's the old saying? Build it and they will come. There's one more thing that you can do 
to help these beneficial insects combat the aphids. If you do get an influx of aphids, wait a couple of weeks before you do anything. In other words, do nothing. Just wait and see what happens. If after a couple of weeks there's no evidence of any beneficial insects and the aphids are building up in numbers, then you can resort to doing what you normally do, whatever that is, hosing them off, squashing them. Ah, but just one word of caution. If you reach for the spray, it's important to know that even with organic formulations, such as oil sprays or soap sprays, they will kill these tiny little wasps just as effectively as they kill aphids. They are rather delicate. So if you do use those uh, type of sprays, you've got to be very careful where you direct it. In my garden, I deliberately let some of my brassicas go to flower so that it does attract the aphids in, which then attract the parasitic wasps and other beneficials. The wasps are winning. You can even see an emergence hole in one of the mummies here. In other words, the next generation of wasps is about to emerge. The plants are finished, so I've pulled them out, laying them beside the bed, so that it gives a chance for the little wasps to emerge from those mummies. If there are other aphids elsewhere in the garden, those wasps will find them. I'm also letting the last of my red cabbages go to flower. That it does look rather amazing and it'll be interesting to see what happens next. This has got me all fired up about making more videos for YouTube and trying to restart my channel, which I haven't loaded to for a couple of years. Um, I'll post as often as I can, but please subscribe so you'll receive a notification when I do post the next video. If you happen to like this particular one, please give it a like. And if you'd like to see another video, here's one right here, which describes how I deal with a different garden pest. Thanks so much for watching.